Okay, so now let's wrap a small one. This little creature is not quite an inch in height and probably just about three quarter of an inch wide. So I'm starting out with 12 inches of 18 gauge square soft copper wire. And just like all of the pendants, I'm gonna find the approximate middle. I'm gonna hold my metal plier very steady right there and just push with my thumb um, and make these two meet. It doesn't have to be exact. Then I'm gonna turn it sideways and I'm gonna bring these two wires down to horizontal. Okay. Because this little guy is so small, I'm gonna go ahead and use a dowel that is the approximate size. And I'll just use the edges to give a little flare. It's kind of cute. I'll put them back up here. Too big. So I'll just use my hands and cinch it down a little bit. And that's a little better. Maybe make it a little taller. Okay. I'm super happy with that shape, so I'm gonna go with that. I'm gonna hold my two wires together real steady where they cross. I'm gonna pinch with my pliers and bring them together and making sure that I'm over the top of the, I'm centered to the bottom point so that I have a nice um, even bail. All right. I'll take uh, about 16 inches of 22 gauge half round. You can take a little less if you want. And I will wrap the neck of this pendant frame just like all of the other larger videos, larger friend videos that I have on wrapping ammonites. And I'm just gonna keep wrapping um, to about an inch I like to have room in the bale to make some design. Making sure that my wraps are nice and side by side. I'm making sure that they don't uh, cross over each other as I wrap. And I'm making sure that the flat side of my half round, I have a little uneven one there, stays with the flat side to the frame. You can wrap to about an inch or you can go a little less. That's a small pendant. When you get to the end, you should have um, an inch or two left of your half round. I'm just going to stop right here to make sure that I do. And I'm going to get rid of this leading tail. Cutting it off, and just leaving the end living right there on its edge. Okay, so now I'm going to hammer these um, these two sides. Okay, I've got my nice bench block going on here. Before I do any hammering, um, if I want to change this frame shape at all, like indent this little side. I should probably do it before the hammering. And I think in this case, I do want to do it. So I'm just going to hold my ammonite where I think I might want it. I'm just going to use my finger and push a little indent into the one side. Okay, that's cute. 
and I still have my bail centered over um, the point of the bottom point of my frame. Yeah, I like that. So now because this is the front of my frame, I'm going to flip it over and actually hammer on the back side because that's just my habit. And I'm going to flare out these curves. And I'm going to transition the wire uh, by hammering just a little bit on the points on the um, straightaways into the into the points. So now I'll just turn this over. And I like the way that's looking. This is actually the side that's going to be the front of my frame. And so I'll use the pliers and just retweak this little bend a little bit came out of shape as I was hammering it, probably because I hit it. Okay. Let me see what that's going to look like. Okay, I like that a lot. So after hammer, hammering, I always like to take the time to um, sand the frame as I go, just to get rid of my hammer marks, soften up these edges a little bit. Normally I sand with a Dremel, but um, you can just use wet dry P800 sandpaper. You can find it at most hardware stores. Here's my little ammonite. Okay, I think I'm happy with that. So now I'm going to bend um, down the veil, um, and I'll also create a back seat with the rest of this uh, wire. And I'll do that by making sure that I'm looking at the front of the frame and then I'm going to flip it over so I'm seeing the back. I'm going to fold right in the middle just by using my thumb and I'm going to bring these two bare wires down the back side of the pendant. And the goal is to try to get these wraps to line up just like that. Then I can use the rest of my half round and I can make a couple of wraps around the neck, make them nice and tight so that there's no bulking. Um, just to tie it to the frame, these two wires and the loop. And then to end these two wires, I'll bring them through the frame and just wrap these two wires coming down the center. Just need a couple of wraps so that we can finish this half round. And I'm going to cut it off inside the frame so that I don't have this cut to the outside. Okay, that looks pretty good. Okay, that looks pretty good. So next I'm just going to make a little seat for my ammonite. I'm going to do that by flipping to the back side of the frame. And I'm going to spread these two wires um, and kind of keep them nestled just inside the frame and shape them so that um, they mimic the outside frame. Okay, I'll just put a little bend on this guy. Okay, and we'll curve these two wires so that they are horizontal. And now if I flip to the front, I should be able to seat my ammonite right on those back wires. And I like that. That's working out pretty well. So you see the curve of the ammonite's going this way. So I'm going to work with the left hand wire and bring it through the frame, this guy, which is um, you flip it, it's the left hand wire. 
So to get it through the frame, I'm just going to back bend it slightly, take the end, make a curve on it, and push through this little frame. I like to straighten these wires back out just so I can make sure to see where I'm going and keep everything as straight as possible. And you'll notice that this causes some tension um, against the frame, and that's what you want. So I'm going to seat my little ammonite back in there, and holding it where I want it, I'm going to bring this wire now around and mimic its curve. Make sure you don't chip your little ammonite while you do this. Okay. I'm just going to keep following it around. I'm going to try to make it as close to the shell's curve as I can. We can use pliers to help us if we need to. I'm probably going to just grab the end of this with my plier because short wire is hard to manage. And it'll help me just turn this a little bit. Got a little bump here I'm going to work out. Make it look a little smoother. I'll fix it a little more later. But pretty much you're trying to follow this cute little spiral that's natural to the shell. Let me stamp this little guy out. Okay. I like the way that's looking. I'm going to cut it right about there. Now I'll take my shell out and I'm going to hammer that. <clears throat> and I can do that by bending it out. 90 degrees, not changing its shape at all, but just maybe more than 90 degrees so that I can reach the part I want to hammer. I'm going to use my little riveting hammer. This is not really what it's used for, but it's got a really small head on it and it's great for tight spaces. pretty good to me. I'll just use my jeweler's file and clean up this end a little bit, round it off a little bit. happy with that. I'll sand it a little bit. Okay. Now I'll just put my ammonite back in there. Hold it the way it's supposed to lay, and then just like a book, fold this spiral right back down onto the ammonite. Okay, that looks pretty good. Okay, now we'll work with this second, uh, second half of the frame wire here. I'm going to pass it back to the front of the frame through this space right here. So I'll just hold on to everything the way it's supposed to sit, and I'll bend this wire following the shape of the frame. 
It's going to make sure my little ammonite stays where I want it. And I'll pull this wire out slightly and bend the end and then push it through the two center wires just like that. Help it through with your hands. It might be a little hard to do. Try not to chip your shell. Flip it over so you can see it. And this is going to help lock that ammonite into position a little bit more too. So I've got it where I want it. My wire's coming from the back. I'm just going to bring it right around the shell, the top of the shell, and squeeze. If I want to continue this wire so that I can make a little spiral or a little design here at the neck, I can do that. I'm real pleased with that. And I might go ahead and do that. I might just curve this back around. Trim a bit of it off. And I'll use my plier to help me because short wire becomes very difficult to move. So make sure to hold everything steady. I just get that little bend going back in the opposite direction. I love it. So everything is sitting really nice. Um, as you're working, you should notice that these two wires have pretty much kind of locked that ammonite in. It's still a little jiggly, so we have to tie it in some more, but for the most part, the outer side of the frame is kind of independent of this um, little inside bit that you've captured the, the ammonite with. So you just want to make sure that your cab is sitting, you know, nicely inside this, um, along, along the, aligned with this outside frame. I hope that makes sense. So I'm going to go ahead and hammer this little bit now. I'm holding everything in place and I'm just going to fold it out 90 degrees so that I can reach the tip here. And I'll just take my small hammer and hammer just the tip of that. While it's out, I'm going to go ahead and sand it and file it. sanding, I'll just fold it right back into place. And I like that a lot. Of course we'll tie it back as we go a little bit later as well. So that looks pretty good so far. I'm going to just give you a nice close-up. You'll notice that the shell, the top of the shell, lays as flush as I can get it with the top of the frame, almost so that the edge is laying on this, on the bottom uh, portion of the, the frame. 
We're going to have to tie it in some more, of course, and add a little bit of wire for design. But this is how your pendant should be looking so far. Okay, so I think we're ready for the add-on wire. This is a tiny little pendant, so I'm using about 9 inches of 20 gauge square soft copper wire. And I'm going to find the approximate middle and use my round nose plier. I'm going to get into um, about 3 millimeters into the plier and make a U-turn, a hairpin turn. Okay, it doesn't have to be exactly even because this is a small pendant, so I'm just going to snip where I didn't measure. You can measure. All right, so um, I'm going to add this wire and attach it, um, you know, to these two inside wires. So I'm going to just slip through the front on either side of these two wires. Oh trying to stay in focus for you. I missed it. I'm going to slip through there. I'm going to pull the wires straight up. And back here I'm going to use my pliers and just give a little squeeze. Tighten them up a little bit if they need to be. Okay. Then I'll bend them out a little bit like that. Okay. To either side of the bale there. Okay. It's going to create a little bit of tension. Um, keep your wire pulled as far up as you can and hold everything steady. Make a bend in the wire and use your the pad of your finger and turn that wire into the shoulder of your pendant. Just like that. You can switch hands and do the same on the other side. They don't need to be exactly even. This is a nice organic form. This is pretty much a free-flowing design so they don't need to be even. They can follow. Uh, you can do some interesting things with you know, both sides not being so even. So I'm going to take this wire down and just curve it around to the back side of the pendant. Might lift this a little bit. When you like your curve, go ahead and hold everything steady. Bend this wire way out and slip it in through the bottom of the pendant. Be real careful not to chip your tiny end night. I like to straighten the wire out. Get a good look at your frame. Then when you're ready, dedicate a real hard bend in that wire. You can take your pliers and gently tighten that up a little bit. Just like that. Nicely done. Okay, if I want to, I can go ahead and uh, bring this wire back up since it's with me and in my hand. And I can turn this wire uh, this way, maybe even cut it and hammer it like I did this side here. I think I'm going to do that. Alright, so just use your fingers and shape this curve the way you like so that it fits the curve of 
your pendant and then holding everything steady here at the neck sometimes I like to just back bend them a little bit too give some whimsy to it something like that I'll trim this off up here at the top I might use my pliers to make that look a little cuter. Give it a little more bend. That'll look pretty all right. So to hammer this, make sure my neck is curved the way I want it to be here. So to hammer this, I'm just going to do like everything else. I'm not going to change its position or its shape. I'm just going to pull it forward about 90 degrees so that I can reach the part that I want to hammer. And in this case, it's just the top. I changed my mind. I'm going to go ahead and hammer this little bit of a curve here too. Okay, and now I'm going to just bend it back up. You don't have to hammer everything I hammered. You can hammer whatever you want or not hammer at all. I want to make sure this wire stays in place here. And then I'm just going to use my fingers and guide this hammered bit back into place. And if I don't like that, I can always cut that off. I'm not crazy about it, I'll be honest. Let me fiddle it a little bit and see if I can make it make myself love it. I turn that down just a tad and see if that helps me. I'm trying to picture it tied off right here. It just feels a little awkward to me. I'll leave it there for now. Okay, no, I won't. So I'm just going to cut the tip off that I don't like. And I'm going to hammer it again up here at the top. Pull it right back out. Keep control over your whole pendant. You can be picky about it. It's your pendant. So let me clean up this end. It's quite all right to change things on the fly. Fold it right back up, making sure that my wire goes back into place right alongside the frame where I had it. I love that. Okay, so I'll leave it there. Certainly I'm going to have to tie it down because it already wants to spring back. And I might use pliers to fiddle this into a little bit more grace in a minute after I tie it down up here. 
But before I do that, let's deal with this other wire. All right, holding everything steady up here at the neck so that nothing moves, I'm going to just bring this wire elegantly down alongside the amnite. Kind of tracing its shell a little bit, the curve of its shell. Just holding it and I'm completing the turn. Okay, so you have a nice, a nice curve. While you have it, I'm going to pull it out and I'm going to hammer it. put it right back into place. Okay, I'm super happy with that. So I'm going to dive it into the space uh, right below the shell here. So I'm going to pull it out a little bit more and forward and I'm going to make a soft gentle bend at the end of the wire and guide it right in there. Straighten it out, it helps you pull it through and push your beautiful hammered curve back into place. So you see how we've clipped a little bit more of the ammonite side right there. So right about here at the bottom of the pendant where it meets the other wire, I'm going to hold my hammered bit in place and I'm going to make a total back bend on that wire. Nice. Okay, I'm going to use pliers and straighten this guy out now. It's just a little bit out of alignment, so I'm just going to take my plier and turn it back. Give a slight pinch, tighten it up. There we go. Now go ahead and give a slight pinch here too. Not over, don't over squeeze. Tighten that up, and then you can do whatever you want with this wire. Sometimes I swing it back around the back. Um, if I don't need it, you can bring it back around the front and give yourself a little curl. You can do whatever you'd like. I'm probably, let's see what I'll do. I'm probably going to, I've got enough wire here. I'm going to try to bring it through here and make a little spiral in that in that space right there. So here I go. I'm going to hold it in place and certainly we'll tie these off here in a, in a bit. I'm going to bring it to the inside because I want to dive into that space. I'm going to pull it out and bend the end and push right through there. I'm going to re put the back of the wire back into place here so I have all the length in the front. And now that it's in this little bitty space, I'm going to try to do a cutesy, a cutesy little spiral. I'm going to turn it up first of all. So basically just bend over the shell here and make a U-turn up. Now look at the end of your wire, make sure it's nice and clean. I'm going to give mine a little snip and I'm going to snip with a 45 degree angle so that I have a point. I'll use my round nose pliers and carefully start to roll this point just at the tip of your plier until you get it a tiny little cute uh, sharp point there. Don't squeeze too hard. Keep turning it in until you love it. And until it fits that space, we're going right into here. Whoa, I love So I decided before I tie them off, 
I'm going to take this opportunity to show you if you wanted to add a, a, an additional stone, a tiny little stone. I have this itty bitty little moonstone. There might be some space enough here for you to do it. Mine has enough space. Yours may or may not. Um, or you could tie a copper bead in there before you tie all these wires together. And just a little easier before you, you know, commit all of this um, to being tied together. You can open it up a little bit and uh, slip a bead in there. So anyway, I'm going to slip a little moonstone cabochon in there. I happen to have one that fits nicely. There it is. And I managed to get it right there underneath these two wires. And I can manipulate them um, to give some forward pressure so that that cab stays in place. And I might even add another wire if I felt like I needed to. So after I slip the cab in there, I'm just using my fingers and I'm pushing this side wire, this, the side of this wire in a little bit. I've got room to do that to make sure that I catch the front of that little moonstone and trap it into that space. And then I'll use tiny wire and uh, I think that's going to do it. That's super cute. I'll use some tiny wire and tie these together now. I have the cutest little one millimeter copper metal beads. So I slipped it onto a bit of half round and I'm thinking to tie it off kind of like that, which I love. So um, if you want to do the same, you can. I basically brought the bead to the center of the half round and I'm going to catch these two wires to the right and then the two wires to the left. Sometimes you have to bend a little hook in this half round to help you slip it into where you want it to go. It's okay if you're on that side of it because you can just come to this side. Okay, just be careful you don't pull your pendant out of shape. Make sure you got a lot of control over that half round. I love the way that looks and it helps to give a little added security to that cab. I want to make sure it comes just a little closer. You turn your pendant over, it'll be a little bit easier to come through this side. You can always use your pliers to help you pull this wire. If your bead jumps a little bit, it's okay. Just put it back, stay calm. There it is. Now keep your thumb over it real tight and then pull these wires tight. Don't let it slip away from you or get out of control. Love that. See there's a little buckling in this wire. I'm going to try to take that out. And I do that just by moving my wire, my half round back and forth a little bit. It tightens it up. That looks a little better. So just to make it pretty, I'm going to wrap another couple of times because I like to do things in threes or odds I should say. Be careful you don't pull too much of your design out while you're doing this. There, there's three and I love that. So one more on this side. Hold my bead in place. Make sure my half round is nice and tight. Get a little hook at the end. Bead it through. Very small space. And then use my plier. Sometimes it's easier when you whisper. There it is. So cute. Okay. So I'm just going to cut these off and tuck the ends behind uh, that brain wire. 
If you need to tighten up this edge over here, um, you can do that with this upper wire. Just take your plier, be real careful not to nick anything or slip, and just turn a tiny little upward bend in that wire so it moves it over the bottom of the stone a little bit. I'll need to sand that a little bit, but uh, you can see how it pulled that wire up onto the stone a little bit more and just gently push these in a little bit. And you can see here that I've got my wire definitely over the moonstone. I can also move some more of this spiral onto it if I need to, but it isn't going anywhere. Okay, super cute. So now I'll just sand these little bits and uh, Probably, I don't know that I actually need to add any ties to this one since I made this bend. This is pretty tight. So you might not need to. You'll check all your wires, jiggle things, make sure that nothing moves that uh, you don't want moving over time. If you feel like something can catch and fall forward, uh, make sure to you know, push things down and um, give grace to the wires. These little guys here I feel like might catch the, ch the chain, so a little trick would be just to bend them down slightly. And to make it lay down more, you see how it bounces back up? I'm going to actually just hold my plier behind that tip and give a little upward pressure. hard to see. I'm slipping my plier underneath there. And I'm giving a slight upward pressure right here in the middle as I hold this tip down. And I think you might be able to see that it made it lay down a little bit more. And then this one here, I'll just turn the tip a little bit to the back. I might want to curve this just a little bit more. Hard to do for me while I'm under the camera, so I'm fiddling it over here off camera a little bit. That's cute now if you get the idea. You can play with yours until you love it. Just run your hands over things and put your chain in there. Make sure that nothing catches. Um, I like to flare these little guys out, so I do this from the back. Hold all your wires steady and just give a little bend outward. See that little curl? It's like a splash. And then you can do the same to this side if you want to. So cute. Love it. If you bent them out too much, you can just push them back. Um, if I felt like I needed to tie anything more, it might be this little bit right here. Feels a little jiggly to me, so I might end up um, putting some half round or 28 gauge along these two wires, and then and then I probably would down here just for accent and design and balance. So I hope you enjoyed that. Now you have uh, small, medium, and large ammonites you can wrap.